Okay, so we now have Fido S on the Raspberry Pi 5. I've installed it to an NVMe drive and uh, it's working really well. I've been playing an Android game. So uh, if I grab my controller here, uh, this is Mars and it is a really good uh, thrust based game. Although I'm not so great at it. But uh, yeah, it's working, working absolutely perfect, as you can see. And uh, if I was to minimize the game, you can see that I've got two desktops. You can call up your settings on the side here. I can go over to this one. I can call up the web browser and uh, go to YouTube. The web browser performance is very good. Uh, so Alpha, one of the creators of Fido S, has got a video on his channel and shows performance and things like that. But I was just really surprised to see it working as a dual desktop system. I didn't think Chrome OS supported it. I've never done it on a Chromebook before and I've never even tried it on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, maybe it was always there, but uh, yeah, it works really well. So I can go up to the top here and go full screen. I can call up my apps. Well, the great thing about Chrome OS is, so I was just playing an Android app. I'm using a full web browser, uh, but also I have Linux apps as well. So let's zoom into this screen so I can show you a bit more of that. So I've shown how to activate Linux in my OpenFide video. And uh, as you can see, I've installed various different apps and things on here. I did actually try to get RetroPy up and running. And if I plug in, uh, well, any of my controllers, you'll see what happens on screen. Connect to Linux, connect to Android. So if I do connect to Linux, it doesn't recognize my gamepad, unfortunately. So I've got a bit stuck there on RetroPy, but uh, I wasn't to expecting to get that far, to be honest. So if I close that down and go back to the Linux apps, you can see that things like uh, File Manager, I've got PC Man on there, and that's all working, and has access to my files. And uh, I always install Xmoto just to test things, and that's working fine. Just pick something random, wow, that looks a bit cool. As you can see, no problem at all. We've got some gravity effect going on here. Oh, managed, oh, nearly. Uh, so if we cut out of that and go back to Linux apps, you can also get the terminal up and also the Discover Store as well. So if you want to install some new apps, then you can pick from the list. All sorts of things in there. But this is on the four gig device. And I think I probably should have done it on my eight gig Pi 5 because I think it suffers running Linux in OpenFide with only four gig. So if I go to system, you can see all the bits on here, look. Don't know what hardware Bertha is, Raspberry Pi 5, three gig of RAM. So that's what it's allocating to Android. And as this is a four gig <laughs> Pi, I'm guessing that's not gonna be a good thing. Uh, although the Android did seem to be working, I'll show PSP in a second. Definitely nice and snappy running from the NVMe drive. Um, this is uh, something which I hadn't seen before. So you've got tablet, phone, or resizable. So tablet does that. And resizable uh, basically gives you a window that you can properly resize. And it seems to work pretty well, actually. Uh, although we've got some weird uh, glitch going on there. So if I go back to PPSSPP, which I've installed, you can see this has come up as tablet. I'll leave it as tablet. This does recognize my controller. Uh, and you can see I've got some games in the Android PSP folder. So uh, 4x4 Jam. I think the lack of RAM um, definitely isn't helping some of the games. So this is an easier to run PSP game. Let's just get rid of the music. And let's just go into a quick race just to show that it's working all right. There we go. Oh, getting a bit stuck. Yeah, so it feels exactly as it should. Nice and responsive. No worries with that. And I didn't have to configure the joypad at all. So I've installed the Aptide Store. You can just install APKs. Super easy if you want to install more Android apps that maybe aren't on the Play Store but I also have the Google Play Store running as well. And so we can go through and install apps from that. So it just is a really nice package. The whole fact that you get Linux, the fact that you get a full desktop browser, the fact that you get Android apps as well. I use this on a FIDE tab, which apparently there's gonna be some new news on soon. 
Uh, I got sent one to test a long time ago, and I think a lot of people are still waiting for those. It is a really nice device, and that runs Fido S. So hopefully the news is good. So in here as well, we have uh, various different things to do with Fido S. There's actually a store in here, and I think this is one of the things that you don't get in OpenFide, or if you try to install some of the things, it doesn't let you. So we've got GApps, so this is how to install the Google Play Store. We've got remote desktop access, and we've got OneDrive. But we've also got, uh, so if we go to Essentials, there's a load of things here that you can install. You can see dedicated YouTube apps, Microsoft Office. Quite a few of the streaming services are there, Disney Plus and Netflix. If we go to web apps, there's a load of web apps here as well. Really quite a nice selection. Extensions, I've never really looked at extensions on this before. Yeah, Grammarly. U-Block Origin, Pocket, and if we minimize that, Themes. So a load of different things you've got in there. And uh, there's some Android apps in here as well. So if you want to just quickly install something like Spotify, I think I've already got Spotify. Let's have a look. I've already got Spotify, so let's pick something else. Oh, and you can see Threads is already installed, so it's just got an open icon next to it. We've still got Twitter on here. I wonder if that will install X. Oh, my Fido S device restarted unexpectedly. Okay, okay, we don't have Twitter, never mind. That was Elon doing something there. So I'm just adding the Android Spotify app because the browser one said that it wasn't supported on this device. So let's see what happens when that installs. And it actually just takes you to the download folder where it downloads an APK and starts installing it. So you can see it says open now. Yeah, and that's, that's working. Just try and make that a bit smaller so we've got a bit of room for the rest of the things that are on here. Let's close this down. So if I was to start to play a song, let's see if that works. Yeah, yeah, we can hear that's working. So I won't play any more of that for any for fear of copyright strikes. So I've got an Android app running. I've got the web browser running on here. Uh, let's call up a Linux app. Uh, so let's just go something basic with Xmoto. And you can see that's come up, and I can move that to another screen so I can game over here. It's super impressive, but I definitely need to install it on my 8 gig Pi. I must say thanks to Tom Turmchenbauer for letting me know about this. Uh, he's very good at letting me know about new operating systems that arrive uh, that I haven't yet tested. So uh, great work by everybody at FIDOS and also OpenFide. It's probably a good idea to try OpenFide first. If you find that there's things lacking, uh, then the more premium version, Fide OS, uh, which is $14.99 a year, I think it is currently, if you need those extra features. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.